Falcha. My name is Andrew Healy and I'm a lover and drinker of Irish whiskey. I'm on a journey of discovery to learn as much as I can about the great spirit of the Emerald Isle. Along that journey, I'm lucky enough to meet other people who are passionate about Irish whiskey. And the My Favourite Irish podcast is their story and their favourite Irish whiskey. Whether that's their current favourite, their first ever dram, or one that has a special place in their life. On today's episode, I got to spend some time recently with Pat Burke. Pat is Oakland born and raised, of Irish ancestry, and he traces his lineage back to Cork and Limerick. We talked about Pat, his reputation as a world-class barbecuer, his visits to Ireland over the years, and of course, his favourite Irish whisky, which is a very, very special bottle of Paddy Irish whisky that Pat bought on a trip to Ireland back in 1984. Yes, 1984. Listen along. Falter Arash, you are all very welcome back to the bar here for a bit of a special gathering. Pat Burke uh, got you at the bar and you brought an absolutely magical bottle of whiskey. Um, yes, this is uh, Patty's old Irish whiskey that I purchased in Ireland um, in 1984 and brought it home. And I still have it. There's what's left which, of it. Which is probably the most impressive part of it all, is yeah, that it's still here. It's still there. So uh, you and I have chattered about um, getting you to the bar and, and sipping on a bit of whiskey, and you said you wanted to bring your yeah. favourite. Um, so a special treat for me to have it. We've obviously got the, the modern iteration of it next door, so probably not fair to do a side-by-side -side tasting, but we'll, oh, sure we'll, ta <laughs> we'll taste a little bit of, uh, of both of them. Um, and you told me that you bought more than one bottle. I did. Back they, in 1980. They let me back into the country with it too, because I didn't realize I didn't. And the guy says, oh, "Don't worry about it." I'm not sure what your duty-free allowance was back then. <laughs> <laughs> they were more concerned about me being on a farm, and they wanted to see my shoes than they were about the, the about, whiskey. About the, okay, about. okay, that makes sense. So the, the the Paddy brand is one that I remember when I grew up. There was there was obviously I grew up in the dark days of Irish whiskey. There wasn't many brands. There was only a couple of distilleries, and Paddy is one of those that stood out. And one of the reasons being, it's got a map of the country on the yeah. front label. And you know, yours shows the four provinces in their respective colours. You know, the modern iteration is a, is a you know has moved on from there. But um, so it, it's going to do some quick maths here. So uh, it's thirty eight years old. Yeah, thirty eight years old. Um, how has it managed to last it this long? <laughs> well, I don't drink a lot of it, but um, I had it buried away in a dark little cupboard. You know. Okay. And it wasn't exposed to sunlight, and it's been, it's been. Um, I, I've taken it on my barbecue competitions, actually. Okay. And um, that probably attributed to most of the drainage on it, but <laughs> but um, uh, uh, it's special, and I don't, you know, it's, I'm going to take it down to the last drop, but I don't know when that'll be. Okay, and, and obviously we, we won't taste a huge amount of it here because no, we, we, um, it's for special occasions. We can enjoy and, as okay. much as... Well, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, obviously, uh, an Irish name, Pat Burke, Patrick Burke. Right. Uh, where, where's the ancestry? Well, uh, my ancestry was born... They were from Cork and Limerick. Okay. Uh, they were, I guess that would be my great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, I think, and okay. grandmother. Um, and my first wife, Judy, uh, she was a direct descendant with her grandparents that came from Northern Ireland okay. directly to, to the United States okay. and came in, 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 uh, developed their, their home in Philadelphia, just okay. outside Philadelphia. So my uh, uh, Irish ancestry, uh, I have a passport, I'm a citizen, uh, was through her. Um, okay. Was okay. through her, her direct descendant. And uh, obviously... Cork and Limerick, you know, good monster stock. Yeah. Um, yeah. That part of the world. You've, you've, have you been back, back and traced? I, I have been back to both Cork and Limerick, but okay. I have not. Um, I, I sit on a bench and just enjoy the view. Enjoy the view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's many great views in, yeah. in that part yeah. of the world. So this is from 1984. Right. I know you've been back since. The last time you were in Ireland was yeah, okay, 2013. So, and um, you showed me some photos, obviously, uh, yeah. you, with Judy. Uh, you trace some of her ancestry right. and, and lineage. Um, you told me some great stories about happening upon some great people who 
took help, you down lays, laneways yeah, to, out to, to country roads and, and, and through records uh, through the county and the and and um, on the computer this gentleman took us and says I know where your your grandparents were born and took us to an old stone okay. house that had fallen apart there's overgrown a, and there's always one of them in every village in yeah, Ireland who knows all yeah, the scandal and yeah. gossip for for, for generations yeah. <laughs> this this gentleman did he we were directed there by the the postmaster oh, oh, in town oh, okay and, uh, so 2013 was the last trip any plans to go now that uh, now that we're uh, I wanted to go back last year but we 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 just did most of it in France and our, our okay. Italy because that's right you're you're and one of the reasons I know you is that you're now remarried to mm -hmm. a lady that I've known for years um who has I, I go by AH when I sign, um, mm -hmm. um, but Catherine goes by KZ or K KZ, KZ. Yeah, which I think is you Catherine know, Zimmer. It's almost the start of a, a radio call sign, isn't right. it? That, that's a, so I've known Catherine for years, somebody yeah. a lot of respect for. We both work in and around the marketing sphere. Mm -hmm. and you were the last people, you and Catherine were the last people to come to the house before the pandemic. Oh, geez. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, that was that. I remember, I, I remember that. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think course. it was the Saturday night before St. Yeah. Patrick's yeah. in 2020. Yeah. We had dinner. I First time I met you. Yeah, and I remember yeah. Catherine, as we were leaving, going, well, should we hug? Should we not hug? And, <laughs> and literally, that was the last person yeah. beyond, you know, my good lady Pretty wife. Pretty crazy time. Yeah. So I think there was a little bit of that. Consumed it, it, over there. Probably it was here during that time, and now it's Goodness, you've been, uh, you've been, you've done well not getting Several through Several years. All about that. So, um, you know, ancestry coming from uh, Cork and Limerick, but you're a, you're a California boy. Born and raised in Oakland. Okay. Yeah, and in, out in the East and, Bay, and, and e educated uh, by by the priests there, or did, did I you went avoid to that? I went to Catholic school in Oakland for uh, my elementary okay. years, and then uh, went to public schools after that. So okay, um, and uh, uh, did some law enforcement in the town, and um, and then moved to uh, Napa in 1994. Okay, so you've yeah. been here a fair while then. Yeah, yeah. And um, have been here in the same house and out in Browns Valley and um, great environment and a lovely area. And I know you as uh, someone who likes to dabble in the culinary arts. I do. Um, I'm retired, but semi-retired. I um, just was hired by Napa Valley College to be accredited instructor and adjunct. Great. Professor. Professor. Instructor. <laughs> um, Professor Burke. It, I'm going to be teaching my first... Uh, Credited course in uh, culinary. Great. Uh, in January, I'll be uh, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from ten to two. Okay. Okay. Well, taking attendance and doing all that stuff. But we'll we'll talk about more yeah. food stuff as we go on. But um, obviously, great for you then to share your experience with yeah. with the next generation. And uh, I've done some stuff through there up in Saint Helena at their Upper Valley campus and their kitchen there. Yeah. The Bill Rose Kitchen and and. Um, uh, teach um, uh, one-day classes for food and wine enthusiast program that they have and uh, I was in uh, competitive barbecue for since 2001 I don't do it any longer but that's a that's an art yeah. and craft all of its own here in America yeah. isn't it and I traveled all over the United States uh, through the south um, you know Virginia Mississippi Alabama Memphis, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, done the world championships in Memphis uh, three times. Really? Yeah, the best we know. ever finished was a fifth place in the world in uh, cooking a whole hog. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah, and a lot I, of fun. I've, I've learned in my time here that barbecue is different regionally yep. through the states. Yep. Um, yep. And in those various regions or even within states, they are fierce proud of what they do well, and, of course and they their are. recipes yeah. and, and a lot of it is handed yeah. down. Uh, is, there a, is there a California style? Uh, yeah, sure there is. Yeah, it's probably a mixed mash of everything else. <laughs> Just like so many yeah. things here in, yeah. in California. So yeah. we're going to continue chatting about a few things, but I'm going to be very... Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to no. pour a yeah. uh, teeny tiny drop of this. I know it's, it, it's precious stuff. Um, so I uh, taste with two glasses, Pat. So um, I'm going to pour a tiny bit in there. And I use the two glasses so that we can, um, we can find out more about the nose. So from one into the other. So that's how I do it. And then, mm. yeah, without the alcohol. Um, 
God, that's gorgeous. It is, um, it's very unique, I think, you know? You're so used to this, obviously, the smell and the taste of this, because it's your, it's your favorite mm -hmm. Irish, it's your go-to. But I find it to be, an, uh, first impressions, I, uh, before we jumped uh, into the recording, I, you know, I nosed the top of the bottle and I found a lot of spice coming out of it now that I've actually poured it into the glass. So, you know, you, um, being in the wine business like I was for a number of years, I always found, too, that the, that, that the empty glass actually is, is a way of um, really uh, getting the esters and all yeah. of the... the yeah, and, and I've discovered that more so with whiskey because it takes the alcohol out of the equation, mm -hmm. and obviously there's more alcohol mm -hmm. in, in whiskey than mm -hmm. wine. So, um, so you, you mentioned time in the wine biz. Um, you're here in Napa since 94, and yeah, you've, you've was, had some fun, in, fun uh, around wine. Yeah, I, I worked, at, uh, I worked in, in Rutherford at, at Beaulieu for a number okay. of years. One of the historic wineries yeah, of, the, of the valley. Uh, one of the first five. Yeah. yeah. And uh, um, some fabulous wines. The Georgia Latour was one of my favorites, always has been. Um, and then uh, went up to Calistoga and actually um, uh, started, a, um, started as the operations manager for a, a little partnership of people that started a winery up there. And um, unfortunately, that... Um, their project didn't last. Okay, so. which is happens more often yeah, than yeah, people would yeah. think around here. They had great ideas, and um, um, but um, it just didn't it just didn't pan out. So okay, um, it is now another winery. Somebody else bought it. Of course, and, yeah. As is the we wife. did all the work. We all we did all the. We should say slancha because I'm going to have a teeny sip. We of this. Uh, we did all the work and built the project, and then. Um, wow, what a treat. What an absolute treat. Um, very smooth. You can feel the heat. Yeah, and there's, there's spice on the tongue. Yep. There's a, we talked about this beforehand. I, I don't know what the... These are, this is a blended whiskey. You know, the, the modern version, which we'll, which we'll taste in a few minutes, is, sells for less than $20 mm. a bottle. I really, I really like it. I think it's a good, a good to very good whiskey at that price. Again, very soft and smooth. I'm finding this to be spicier, and I'm guessing, and I'm happy to be corrected if I'm wrong, that there's some pot still whiskey in here, a decent oh, chunk yeah. of pot still, which, yeah. which gives that spiced character from the distillation process. Well, we had talked earlier too, you said 43, 43%. Yeah, yeah, yeah so 43, and the modern version weighs in at 40. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of the commercial whiskies come in at 40. I, I think with, uh, with that little bit of extra alcohol, it just gives the flavors a little lift. But on the palate, that is just sublime. There's a, it's almost a bready character to it. It's just very, yeah, yeah. It's not like needy. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a, it's a real treat, a real treat. So, going back to barbecuing, uh, you have a great uh, Instagram handle. Uh, um, Napa Valley Barbecue King. King, NV Barbecue King. I will. Uh, I can't remember how I got it. I think it was a, a coworker of mine that said, "Oh, you need to be on Instagram." I said, "What's that?" And he goes, "Oh, I'll take care of it for you." <laughs> And Next thing you know, he says, "Here, this is what you. This is who you are." So he yeah. crowned you the barbecue king of yeah. the Napa Valley. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jay Bruner. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. Jay. Yeah. yeah. Great guy. So. Um, yeah. No, this is fantastic. Fantastic. So you've obviously lived in. I, people know I've lived here since two thousand and eight. You're here much longer than that. Um, so you've seen things change, mm -hmm. grow, and evolve, and 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 you know most of it for the good, some of it not so good, not but. So good. Um, so obviously a love of whiskey. Where's where's your go-to places for let's say a, a great cocktail here? Well, I think the, 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 the there's uh, Arbor, what, pronounce it for me. Arboretum, isn't Arboretum. it? Arboretum. That's and, what and, I thought and, it was, but it was yeah. And the bar is actually I think capital letters because right. it's a it's a bar. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, on First Street there, across from the was it Archer Hotel, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so, so it's part of what the distillery is doing here in yeah, in, in town. Yeah. So I'm going to give you. Um, I'm just going to go over one, two, three drops of distilled water there, just to. Um, and then uh, I think one of the best old uh, old fashions are my favorite. I, okay. I love old fashions. Okay. Um, um, I think one of the best old fashions I've had. Um, um, was at uh, the kitchen door. Okay. Yeah, yeah, at the bar. 
At the bar. And obviously they've just moved location here right. in town. They were at the Oxbow yeah. Market and they're now in they're First now Street in First Street in Napa. Yeah. Um, and Great spot. You know this, but folks won't know. Actually, our, our next door neighbours own the restaurant, Todd and Amelia. And oh. Great people. Yeah. Great people. Uh, I know um, one of the folks who works at their bar, so it's lovely to hear you say that you really enjoy their, uh, their cocktails yeah. there. So do you ever put together your passion for Irish whiskey and, and meat? Because obviously most barbecue is meat. And would, you have a, would you have a pairing for... Well, I would say that um, I think a, a steak would be okay. awesome. Okay. But um, maybe after the steak or after the steak I'd have that or okay. before. Um, uh, of course, I'm partial to wine. But, Aren't but, we both? Yeah. Aren't we already? Yeah. 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 Um, but um, nice steak with some uh, maybe scalloped potatoes and rich, heavy meal. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've always, my thing has been that if you're going to pair whiskey with something, there has to be fat, fat in there. Fat. That's, right. That's and I, I haven't fat. done any work on, on trying to pair things, but it, it, to me, it's like the, 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 the warmth and richness and spice mm-hmm. character and, and obviously the alcohol helps to, to, would help to cut through that. Um, really nice. interesting with the, with the few you drops of water. picked up a water. little bit of chocolate. I was going to say some, I almost yeah. going to say fudge. Yeah, yeah. I picked up a little bit of... Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, it's it's intriguing. It really is, Pat, to to taste something like this. So, yep. um, so we you know we've talked cocktails. We've talked pairings. Uh, you obviously, kitchen door. You you reckon they do your favorite cocktail? Any an arboretum? Any anywhere yeah. else in oh, town? Cole's Chop House. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's where you get great bar cocktails and the steak. steak right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they've been around. Yeah. They've been ra- they've been around forever. So, yeah. um, excellent. Right. Let's pour a little bit of uh, of the modern iteration. So. Um, for folks who don't know the story of why Paddy is called Paddy, it originally had a really long name. It was basically the Cork Distilleries Company blended Irish whiskey. And a guy called Paddy Flaherty was their salesman. And apparently Paddy did a great job of selling all around Cork. And one of his sales technique, techniques was to buy everyone around when he would go out selling. So you know, you're bound to sell more whiskey when, <laughs> when you're buying it at the other end. Um, it got to the stage, apparently, that when people would order in, they'd, they'd call in their order, um, I'm, I'm assuming on a telephone, you know, back in the day. And uh, because it had a really long name, people just started calling it Paddy Paddy's. or Paddy's Whiskey. So apparently, and I... A little bit of contradiction online when I was researching it, but 1912 apparently is when they actually changed the name mm. to uh, to Paddy's Irish Whiskey. You know, and as, as I said earlier, it was one of the few brands that... Um, there is definitely t- a difference. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, this is obviously a commercial whiskey yeah, right. by today's standards. This, um, I'm picking up notes of like honey and yeah. a sweetness yeah. Then I can't put my... Yeah. To me, there's a... Um, a Jolly Apple Jolly Rancher. Yes. Yeah. So, again, when I was, when I was reading about the modern iteration, a um, couple of different uh, views on people. We, we don't know the blend. We don't know what's in it. As I said, I suspect there's a chunk of pot still whiskey in what you bought. There's a 80. huge difference. This is much more commercial. They say that they're... Um, one one piece I read said that there was more single malt or malted whiskey mm-hmm. in there, um, and but then another one said there's a, a chunk of grain whiskey, and grain whiskey generally is made from corn. Oh, so um, and that would, to me, lead us to this kind of sweetness. Yes, right. Um, and obviously, you know, to Sazerac's credit, because Sazerac now own the brand, they bought it in 2016 from Irish distillers. They're actually bringing it in bulk here to America and bottling it. Mm. So you know, a step in the right direction in terms of. They're not shipping heavy glass bottles. Right. Um, but, yeah, God, it's a different, completely different whiskey. Completely different. Um, this has, to me, uh, more of a, a peaty as well. Um, uh, when you say earthy? Yeah, earthy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, because yeah, you've told me in conversations that you're not a fan of. I'm not a fan of Scotch, Scotch whiskey and, and peated, yeah. the peated style. Yeah, um, but yeah, I 
I tasted this, as people can see, you know, the bottle is not full. Um, I'm going to be, hopefully be be before we're done with the year, do a, a video of Irish whiskies under $20 and that this one fits in here. And I, for a drinking whiskey? You could drink that all day long. Yeah, I'm I don't not, think you'd be able to. But <laughs> I'm not sure when I mean, you'd be it's, starting it's, or it's finishing. It's extremely, um, it's smooth. It's smooth. very smooth. Very smooth, smooth, soft, very for, attractive, yeah. For, for a whiskey. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, doesn't have any of the complexity or character that the, no. that this older bottle has. Um, no, pretty um, straightforward. Yeah, I'm going to drop a few in there and see what that does. Um, now, fascinating to, uh, fascinating to try them, Pat. Uh, Pat. So, um, obviously, we, we, I, I shared the story earlier. We saw you. You were the last people that we saw before the pandemic. Obviously, a, um, a positive and negative time for us all and, and, you know, silver linings. You know, my silver lining is my journey into whiskey from it. But you did something wonderful through that time. I know you're, a, you're an avid swimmer. You swim a lot every day. Every day. Um, but you did a, did a swim did challenge. I did American Cancer uh, Society. I saw it on Facebook, and they, they swim a mile. And they, their goal was 16, uh, 16 miles. And um, uh, I did it and I did it just in a little over 14 days and then continued on swimming. So I think I totaled, uh, I think, 26 or 27 wow, miles good in, for you. in the month of July. Yeah. And so when you're doing your normal morning swim, what sort of distance would you be swimming? I, I do uh, 2,000 yards. So that's 80 80 laps, wow. one, two, so uh, 80, 80 lengths. Wow. And I can, I can do it, uh, my best time, my, my best time was 30, just a little over 36 minutes, nonstop. Um, Good I for did you. it today in 30, 38. Because, as we know, none of us are getting any younger, Pat. No. But good on you for yeah. getting out and doing that yeah. almost every day or every day. Uh, I take the weekends off. <laughs> <laughs> when you... Saturday and Sunday. Okay. That's, um, uh, yeah, that, that, that's allowed. You'll see me at the pool. Uh, I'm at a different pool now, so it's usually 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And, and uh, I'm done in you know, less than 40, 40 minutes. And, and I know that you have a, because um, you've, you've seen photos of you shared, there's a group of you from your swim who socialize together now, yeah. now that we've yeah. come out the other side yeah. almost. Yeah. It's uh, and, uh, a friend's, uh, one, of, one of them, we had uh, dinner this weekend and we watched the Georgia uh, Mississippi State football game because okay. we have a, a mutual friend whose uh, son is okay. the starting yeah. tight end. Okay, brilliant. For Georgia. That's, yeah. And he came from Napa, didn't he? Yeah, he lives right right, right near me. Okay. About two blocks away. Okay, great. Great kid, Brock Bowers. Okay. and Good football name, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and destined for greater things, is he? Mm. Yes, he's... He's good. Yeah. Okay, good. Obviously, you know, you've Irish ancestry. I'm, you know, I'm born there. I, my son kicked for Napa High. But I still struggle with with the game. I it's not, I'm not something I'm raised with. I, yeah. I I appreciate the arts that exist within the game mm -hmm. and some of the dark arts that exist within yep. the game. But I I struggle to watch it. It's, uh, it's so it's, that was one of the things that I did too in the culinary world is that I worked actually um, and was a chef for the Oakland Raiders when they were here in um, Napa for their training camp. That's right. I did a uh, uh, their last season here um, and. Uh, did their lunches and dinners, um, cooked the order for them. Yeah, because folks won't know that the the Raiders used to come to Napa yeah, for their preseason. Yeah, yeah, every year. Training camps. They did six weeks here. Yeah, they had. So um, for six weeks, I was working seven days a week, and it was a it was a tough one. And I, you're a Raiders fan. Um, I was Oakland. You okay. know, born and raised there. That's now why. That's why. Now they're in Vegas. Well, that's so. why I say Raiders yeah. because I remember them back in the eighties yeah. when they were down south. Yeah. Because um, yeah, back when in went the, to LA. yeah, back yeah. in the eighties, uh, American football was shown on Channel Four, um, an English channel. So I'm actually a Dolphins fan from those mm -hmm. days for two reasons. One, they actually did okay back then. A, a man yep. called Marino could actually yep. throw the ball. He could, and their colours were green, white, and orange. Yeah, there you go. So I put one and one together, and they were that's so I've yeah they haven't done too well recently, but uh, nor yeah. have the Raiders unfortunately. Yeah. They, they've yeah. yeah. Well, and any plans to go down to Las Vegas and watch? I'd a like match? to go see a game, but uh, uh, that, I understand the stadium's amazing. But 
yeah, I don't know. I met a lot of nice guys. I mean, there's some, there's some uh, decent people that, that, that play that game. Yeah. And they're very appreciative of everything that I did for them. And um, if I can, uh, Derek Carr, their quarterback, would come out every morning and would come to where I was cooking lunch and would come back behind into the, my little cooking area and give me a hug every morning and wow. say, say I, we, I appreciate you, everything you're doing. That's he lovely. Says, if it wasn't you, you know, we wouldn't be here. You're feeding me. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely. I'll take a double cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it's great that you know, there's actually people behind this, yeah. well, regardless of the sport, yeah. whether it's football or yeah. baseball or soccer. You know, they're, they're real humans. Yep. And it's nice to actually meet them on that level, yep. which you got to do. Yep. So, um, um, yeah, that was, it was pretty that was, a, that was the good part of it. The, the, the other part was just the long hours. It was yeah. tough. It really was. Yeah. You know, and I'm not young anymore. So. Well, we won't let your secret out. Yeah. <laughs> keep swimming and it'll keep you young. Mm -hmm. Pat, we, um, we, we're going to continue chatting, but we're going to stop recording. So, okay. um, it's not Thank you. you. Yeah, to your health. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate well, it. Well, yeah. I'm greatly appreciative that you brought this incredible gem out to share with me. I, I, I do appreciate it. I'm sure people will comment below on how envious they are that, uh, that we got to share this together. Um, and I look forward to over the winter and into next year cracking a few sure. a few more bottles that I we think have. You have a few to do. Yeah, There's you know some that haven't been opened yet. Yeah, you're giving away my secrets now. <laughs> yeah, I'm slowly getting there. Um, yeah, my 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 kind of a, obviously you know we talked about tasting wine. Um, what I do first is I'll open a bottle and I'll uh, pour it and drink it straight, no no ice or water. Yeah. Then I'll do one with some ice. And then I'll actually um, do a proper tasting note like we would do in, mm -hmm. in wine sense. I'll lay it down in the kitchen on the white surface and I'll do a tasting note. And that just allows me to experience it in different ways. Um, yeah, so when, when just, we've got some fun ones in there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Slain. Slain, yeah. Owned by one of the big boys. So Brown Foreman are the owners uh, of Slain. But that's one of the reasons why Irish whiskey is doing so well sure. is the big boys have gotten involved. Um, you know, obviously, Sazerac now own mm -hmm. own Paddy or Paddies. So, so yeah, um, we uh, thank you for your time. Thank and, you. And uh, yeah, we will. Right. Cheers. Cheers. What a treat! What an absolute treat! Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, that's just that's magical, truly magical. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode. You'll find more episodes wherever you get your podcasts and you'll find the My Favourite Irish video series at irishwhiskeylad.com That's Irish Whiskey with an E L-A-D dot com If you've enjoyed this episode I'd appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes to leave a review or a rating at your favourite podcast platform Until next time Sláinte Wah